God always has a funny way of giving you that still, sure voice. And knowing if a person is from God or the enemy, it will speak with his word, but it will also come in clarity and not confusion. Mm -hmm. Because if it's clear and concise, then you know who's, who it's from because God speaks in certainty. The devil, okay, he all, he either overpromises or he undergives. So you're not going to get truly everything. It's going to be molded in a way in the surface of where it may look good and it may feel good. Mm -hmm. I'm not just dating in a forever dating pool. I don't want that. I ultimately want to have a spouse. I ultimately want to have kids. I ultimately want to be with someone more than just a partner or just a relationship. I want to be married. I want to be married. I want these things. And I think we kind of steer away from those deep conversations because we feel like it's going to scare off people. But boundaries only scare off the imposters. Mm -hmm. Boundaries don't scare off the people who are meant to be in your life. And if they're meant to be in your life, they're not going to get scared by you simply saying what you want. No, I'm not asking you for a ring. I'm not putting no gun to your head and saying, hey, up in six months, you got six months. I'm not doing that. And I don't recommend anybody to do that because then that kind of makes me feel like it's an idolizing of wanting to be married just to say I have a husband or just to say I have a wife. You have to get out of that. Godly dating. Dating as a Christian. I mean, it, it's got to be challenging in this day and age. But I have brought a special guest with me to discuss Christian dating in today's culture. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier peer engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. I have a first time guest, and I'm sure this isn't going to be the last time she's going to be a guest. Today's guest is an inspirational speaker. A, 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 a vocalist. She's a motivational enthusiast. She's a creative and she has phenomenal content on YouTube. I follow her on YouTube, follow her on Instagram. Uh, she has some great reels there that I want you to watch. So I'll have some of that linked up in the description below. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Drew Davis. How are you doing this evening, Drew? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited. Yes, for sure. We're going to jump into this uh, godly dating. I know you've done some reels on this topic and overcoming the, the challenges with dating as a Christian. Uh, I, I went through a divorce. I remarried. I wasn't out here in these dating streets that long. So uh, this is why I have you on here to discuss this. Well, first of all, let's jump into this. Who inspired you to become the woman you are today? Oh, God. And it may sound cliche. It may sound cliche. Um, God has placed people in my life. Um, I have friends. Um, I have my mom. Um, and I have people who he has placed in my corner. But ultimately, he is the one that helped molded me. He helped discipline me, correct me, prune me, and kind of get me um, towards the path that he set out for me. And I will not say that I regret anything that he has done or allowed in my life. So I'm happy. Mm. Amen. Mm -hmm. to that. Love it. Cause we gotta, you know, cause sometimes we give the, the created more than the creator. Right. Yes. You yes. know, um, and, and, and I get it, you know, we got moms, we got influences and, and parents and pastors and stuff like that. But ultimately uh, it's God who placed them there. So amen to that. Amen. <laughs> what are some of the most common challenges dating a uh, Christian space today? Um, I feel. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, Enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok. 
YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I hope that you're the one And that you are the prototype Like there are a lot of um, culture norms and standards that um, pressure us into wanting to conform our faith and conform our walk and compromise because they also kind of play this picture that maybe we need to do this in order to have, or maybe we need to compromise and settle in order to be able to get the love that we desire. Maybe we have to walk on eggshells with what we take in as our walk and our faith in order to kind of make everybody else comfortable. And I think that's a big, um, one of the big, you know, obstacles that we deal with on a day-to-day -day. as a Christian, as, you know, being a single Christian, that's something that we have to fight. Um, I really wouldn't say anything else because that's really the ultimate, <laughs> that's the ultimate thing that we fight each day is basically our identity in Christ and not being grounded in that and allowing everybody else to kind of persuade us into their own ideologies of what they think we need to be. Mm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, because the Bible talks about be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. So we got to absolutely let him transform us mm -hmm. from your personal uh, dating experience. What was dating like for you before a believer and being a believer now? Well, um, I, I keep it straight to the point. So I would say creating soul ties. Mm -hmm. um, that was my main thing. I kind of before um, I kind of been saved all my life. I'm not going to you know, lie about that. I was but I had to get rebaptized. I got baptized twice. Mm -hmm. I was baptized at seven because I was a kid. And I'm like, oh, I know the Lord, but I want to do what everybody else is doing. I want to get in the pool. Um, but then when I turned 16 and I got to deal with a little bit of life kind of as a teenager, um, then I was able to get saved at 16 truly and wholeheartedly, but I'm 16. So I had some growing up to do. And when I got in the world, you know, it's kind of like they, they paint this pretty picture of adulthood and what the world is supposed to be. And it's basically like this colorful place and you don't want to, you want to be a part of it. You see it, it may look good. It may shine bright, but the things that have to be sacrificed in order to live in that. Um, and that was what I chased after. I always chased after wanting to kind of live that um, lavish lifestyle, be the person that had her beautiful corporate job, being able to travel where she wanted to go, date whoever she wanted to date, deal with whoever she wanted to deal with. And I was creating a lot of ties to people that were not meant to tie with me. So after I got saved, really mm. wholeheartedly, after I stopped really straddling the fence, because that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started to kind of change my mind. My mind was changed first. Um, it kind of helped me to lose old habits, old ways, old people, old friends, um, and even opportunities that I felt like were lucrative, but they were causing me to compromise who I was in him. And so after I was able to really 
gain a relationship with God, get intimate in a relationship with him, then I started to see things more spiritually. Um, I became more spiritually mature. I became more mindful and, a, and, and way more aware of what was around me instead of kind of just moving through life and going through the motions because something may feel good, because something may look good. Everything good isn't God. Mm-hmm. And I had to learn that <laughs> the hard way. Yeah. But after I got saved, truly, because I keep saying truly, because we can still get, we can be saved, but it's about that heart posture. How you shift that? How you change that? How do you mold that? How how do you walk into the purpose of God in righteousness? How do you do that? And what does that look like? And I'm gonna tell you, don't it don't look like <laughs> the times that I might have been in the club or you know traveling here and there, talking to who I wanted to talk to, kind of still having control over my life. And that was also a big problem was trying to have control over everything, not understanding that we ultimately don't have control because the creator is the author and the finisher. So he molds and creates everything. He allows the things that we go through in order for us to kind of be pruned, be corrected so that we can kind of get them areas together. But we don't really notice that when we're in this high life when we're high off of life and not really high off the Lord, because that's who we need to be high off of is him. So, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And that's real, real, because the Bible talks about how we should guard our heart and the the rivers of life flow from it. You know, so everyone shouldn't have access to us. I I think a lot of times, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but once we chase that feeling, the butterflies, you know, they make me feel some kind of way. All of a sudden, the you know, the heart is open. And that's when we just start to compromise and, and give way more than we should have, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. The heart is deceitful, though. So we got to be mindful <laughs> of what we choose with our hearts, because sometimes our hearts don't want to listen because we love. It's kind of like a love bombing type of thing. So mm-hmm. we got to be mindful of that. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been love bombed before? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that has happened many a times. Um, and when that happens, I try to see and I have to watch it because because I'm in school, um, wanting to learn more about, you know, psychology, wanting to ultimately get into counseling, I be psychoanalyzing. So immediately when somebody comes in doing that, I'm like, okay, what was wrong? Did you, were you love, you know, <laughs> did you lack some type of affection that you, you know, yeah. I'm always doing that. And I have to catch myself, you know, how people say that's your toxic trait. My toxic trait is that I'm always psychoanalyzing to see, you know, what's wrong and mm-hmm. how I can help in any way. If I see something that is um, a pattern that can kind of go into a downward spiral. So that's my toxic trait when everybody try to, you know, talk about toxic traits now. That's what's trending. So I wanted to throw that out there. That's a toxic trait of mine. Mm-hmm. No, I, I I get it. It's it's kind of like the uh whole Iron Man thing when he got on his Iron Man suit and he can like kind of see everything, you know, through the yep. Iron yep. Man eyes, you know, you guys <laughs> so. <Yep. laughs> Yeah. That's exactly what I'll be doing. I'll be like, okay, Drew, back yeah. up a little bit. You're not their therapist. Yeah, right. (laughs) And no, that's real. Do do you find that more of a a help or or is that kind of more of a hindrance? Like psychoanalyzing, do you because I know you say you feel like it's a toxic trait, but I think there's some some good parts to that too, right? Because you are in protection mode you just you letting people know that look i'm not a fool i'm not just out here but do you think that works more in your favor or you think it works more against you i would say both Mm -hmm. um because on one end how it can work for me is i help people which is something i love to do um the things that i may see in people that they may not notice um, patterns that may happen or behaviors and, and how the way that they think, you know, I'm like, Hey, well, have you, you know, thought of it this way? Um, you know, maybe we can try to reconfigure it, Mm -hmm. but on the bad side of it, see, I I can help people, 
but then I have to watch it because on the bad side of it, there are a lot of broken people. And really, we're healed, but we used to be broken. That just took, a, we just have a different timeline of healing. And I have to watch that because I'm always, you know, people try to say I'm a healer. I'm not saying I'm that. Mm -hmm. But when, you know, you have that type of invitingness and, and you try to talk with somebody and help them, mm -hmm. it gets to a point of that's all people may want you for. That's all they may desire. Um, you know, they take advantage of that. Um, you also have to be mindful of not trying to fix them because you can help somebody, but you can't fix nobody. That's not your job. <laughs> That's God's job. God's job is to fix us, to prune us, to mold us. It is not your job to fix the other person. That's right. So okay. that's what I have had to you know, dial back on mm -hmm. because I have had issues where it seems like I can turn into his mama mm. because maybe they lack that. Maybe they don't have them anymore. And sometimes people just seek that type of love and then you can easily kind of fall into it by just wanting to help. But you also have to have discernment as to who you want to give that capacity to and how deeply you want to give that capacity to. Because sometimes people are not able, they only have an ordinary capacity, but you have this extraordinary thing that you're trying to give them in their ordinary capacity, and then they can't handle it. It's kind of like pouring water into a cup and it starts overflowing because it doesn't have capacity to hold this big pitcher of water in this eight ounce glass. That's right. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that analogy. You yeah, you can't be a pitcher and you you're dating eight ounces of eight ounces of, of 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 a glass, you know. Yeah. You, you know, you'd be giving away way too much. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that. So we kind of talked about discernment a little bit. Like, how do you know? And maybe you can help someone who's listening or watching. Like, how do you know if somebody is from God or if you know they're from the devil? Right? Because <laughs> the devil, the devil knows what you like too. Oh, he can put it in a pretty picture, can't he? Because okay, he can, he can I tell people that picture. the devil, if you think the devil is the man on a hot sauce bottle, you, you have another thing coming. He don't always have horns. <laughs> he doesn't always look like that because people also have to know in the Bible, he's described as, as this beautiful thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He's described as a thing that was created to be a beautiful angel of light mm -hmm. as people, you know, as biblically as you talk about it. So it's it's very hard mm -hmm. when and I'm going to say this for ladies and for men, when you mm -hmm. literally have that person that is everything on your list, everything. But their heart posture is not correct, mm -hmm. but their attitude is bad. But their walk with Christ is not a walk at all. And I think discernment, I think sometimes when we have, when we think about discernment, you know, we always say intuition, intuition. I always say that intuition is AKA the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That is that little voice inside your head that's telling you run, okay? Or it's telling you ignore, or it's telling you don't go over to their house. <laughs> God always has a funny way of giving you that still, sure voice and knowing if a person is from God or the enemy, it will speak with his word, but it will also come in clarity and not confusion. Mm -hmm. Because if it's clear and concise, then you know who's, who it's from because God speaks in certainty. The devil, okay, he, all, he either over promises mm -hmm. Or he undergives. So you're not going to get truly everything. It's going to be molded in a way in the surface of where it may look good. And it may feel good. But on the ultimate, it it, it will not. It will take away everything from you. You will have detri uh, detrimental disaster everywhere you look. Unnecessary warfare. Um, people, you know, uh, who don't let you go. Uh, stalkers, mm -hmm. um, obsessors, you will have so much going on. It'll be chaos. Mm -hmm. And 
when people, you know, God always says, you know, how people say God say that he don't come in um, confusion. God is not the author of confusion. Okay, confusion. Right. A lot of people think and the, also a lot of people think with their hearts and not and not really what they not their spirits, mm -hmm. because they think of things that can um, try to satisfy the flesh, which, you know, the flesh is like something that like a flesh eating disease. It's, it's never satisfied. It has to keep eating at you. It has to keep taken away from you. So anything that is trying to make you compromise, anything that is trying to make you do something that you know isn't right, that is going against the word of God, that is going against anything that he has shown you or led you to, that's how you know it's not from him. Mm -hmm. Anything may, that may look pretty but feel bad, that's how you know that it is not from him. Mm -hmm. You got to make, you have to be very sure and, and don't allow your emotions to cloud your discernment for the sake of being loved. And I think I posted that earlier today mm -hmm. because that came on my mind so strong because I've been there. OK, I've been there thinking that someone is everything I could hope for. Oh, well, maybe this is my husband and kind of idolizing the idea of marriage, idolizing the idea of having a husband that I'm not looking at their heart posture. I'm not looking at how do they react to pain, loss and grief? How do they handle that? Because those are the ultimate things that matter. Looking at their 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 ancestry. How he treat his mama? How he treat his family? What is his relationship with his siblings? Because see, back in the day, they used to matter. You had to ask, you know, yeah. well, what family are you from mm -hmm. to know about that person? But nowadays, you got technology. You got everything that's going to be able to give you all. But see, people don't understand that all of those things cannot show you their heart. Right. It can't show you where that lies and if it truly lies with God mm -hmm. or not. And I think we try to, you know, overthrow it because we may lack affection because we haven't got through our trauma yet, that we try to just paint something into something else. And that is ultimately what can hurt us in the end, because we keep attaching ourselves to the outcome and what we think this should be instead of detaching ourselves and allowing God to write that love story for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Love it because the Bible talks about uh, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways right yes so mm -hmm. you know you, you got to be careful you got to have that certainty like you say have that you just know you're like all right god yeah i know this is the one but that uncertainty you know he's kind of don't know, you you know doubt. it ain't in it if mm -hmm. it's any type of doubt it no you might want to check that again mm -hmm. <laughs> for yeah. sure for sure and you talked about I think there was a reel that you posted about, I think it was today where you said about, uh, what did you say? About finding a godly uh, spouse in church or like knowing the difference. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Talk about that. <laughs> Woo. So um, we go, yeah. Being churchy and not godly. That's what I had posted. Um, and like people, I know some people think that, I, you know, oh, well, you're just posting these things. No, I, I went through them. OK. Um, and I talked about that because it's very it's very and especially for our baby believers. OK, the people who are just coming in thinking, you know, yeah, newbies that think it's like, oh, well, you know, I met them in the church and they read their Bible. I see them doing this and that. But then on down the line, oh, well, they were manipulative. They were abusive. They were doing everything outside of God, you know, Monday through Saturday. And I think sometimes because we're believers, we want to look to the church. We do. Um, but that's community. And I don't think we should idolize it in a way that, oh, well, my husband has to be here. Because you can meet your husband at a on a trip somewhere. Right. You can meet your wife in a grocery store. I met my wife on Instagram. <laughs> in the DMs, okay? Because mm -hmm. that's where it, sometimes it happens. In the DMs, it can happen that way. Yeah. But I think sometimes because we're so in love with, you know, being a part of community, being at the church, serving, ministering, that we think that that's the best place. That's the ultimate place to find somebody. 
And somebody, most of them people that are churchy, and I know I'm a, <laughs> nobody going to like me when I say this, but most people that are churchy are so in love with the politics of God and not the heart of God. Because they're so adamant in, you know, how praise and worship needs to go, um, how the preacher needs to do this, whether the rules and regulations of the church and of these various groups and ministries that we have going on. And they're so in love with that. They're so in love with, oh, I need to shout 24 seven that I don't need to get my heart right behind closed doors. Sometimes I don't need, oh, I don't need to pray. I don't need to, you know, work on me because I'm, a, you know, I'm saved. I, 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 I go to church every day. I read my Bible every day. But also when Jesus talked about them people casting out demons, those people, you know, praying and going to these different places and, and delivering people, he can still say, depart from me because I never knew you. That is something that we need to be checking. We need to be checking our heart postures. If our minds are really renewed, if we are actually walking and living as the word says, now nothing is going to be perfect, but as long as you are trying and long as you are not, um, you know, some people who have or churchy, they, some of them lack emotional intelligence and they're asserting their dominance or, you know, aggression or manipulation in places that you don't need to be putting it. And not understanding, well, if God says how love is supposed to be, love is patient, love is kind, love is not rushed. Mm -hmm. Love isn't um, tearing someone down in order to make yourself feel good. Um, love isn't trying to justify God, but putting a label of God on it so that makes it okay. Hurting somebody, doing kind of whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, that's not love. And in First um, Corinthians 13 and 7, that's that's the outline of it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. if you have love, you if you don't have love, you don't have anything. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what I'm trying to help people on, because dating out here, especially being a woman in the church, mm -hmm. because I sing, um, I love singing. That is something I love to do. Mm -hmm. It's always somebody, somebody's son that's trying to be churchy, trying to see how many Versus they can spit <laughs> in order to kind of, you know, get my number or if they some, say something profound enough or they try to pull me this way and pull me that way with the scripture or with the um, with church or with singing or, hey, can I, you know, I, I wanted to come visit your church knowing you're not coming for God. You just coming for me. This don't have nothing to do with ultimately what God wants. And I'm, I am surely not one of those people who just are in love with being, you know, churchy and not godly. Yeah. You have to emanate his light and emanating his light is not you trying to spit and kind of get your ego stroke, mm -hmm. spitting scriptures back and forth to me, thinking that I'm just going to swoon. No, that, that, no. Yeah. Or the other thing that churchy people do is use the scriptures for their advantage. Use it to say, oh, well, this is what I mean. I remember I dated someone and he was a minister. Mm -mm. And he tried to say to me that um, I think it was, um, let me find it. Because I think it was in First Peter. It was talking about um, your actions mm -hmm. and how you should allow your actions. When people say, let your actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. I told him this. This is in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay. This this is in the Bible. I was like, this is in the Bible. And he was like, well, no, I don't, I don't read that um scripture that way. I said, wait a minute, sir. <laughs> what do you mean? It it said, let it let your actions be done in deed and in truth and not just your words. It that's what it says. And he decided to say that no, it didn't mean that. It means <laughs> it meant something else to him, and he doesn't feel like that goes. Um, I also remember a time where he said, well, I, if you can't trust my actions, trust my character. I said, sir, you are not God. So I cannot do that. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> I cannot do that. Uh, yeah, and right. when, when that happens and when they try to use God as their crutch 
or use him for their advantage as a tool mm. to try to get someone or manipulate someone into thinking, well, no, you're thinking you're wanting too much or you're not handling it enough. That is not, that ain't of the Lord, okay? I'm going to tell y'all that is not of the Lord. Run very, very far away when you <laughs> see somebody coming your way like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know they be quoting scriptures. I mean, y'all can't even have a conversation because they, yep. you know, <laughs> can't even have a conversation because we talk, we, we, we trying to spit verses back and forth to see who know the Bible best. Mm -hmm, right. Well, the devil knew the Bible too. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> yeah. How important is, uh, community and, and accountability when it comes to dating? Like, do you believe that when you're dating someone that say you are in church and do you maybe have that covering where you have other men that look out for you and, and maybe you are dating someone and they like, hey, run them past me before you go on a date. Do, do you believe in that, uh, that kind of? I believe in it. I believe in it. Okay. Um, okay. I, I don't, I wouldn't say um, that that is always in the church. Yeah. Um, because I have had um, friends, my friends now, like they, they help me if I need to call them, especially if I have um, my mentor and I'll talk to him about it. Cause I'm like, Hey, you know, he's my mentor slash God daddy. But yeah, so I would go to him and be like, hey, um, I need your help with this um, to kind of, you know, and I think I think that I think community and accountability is vital as a believer because it kind of helps you stay on track. It kind of helps you um, get out of your way of thinking. Um, and also with abstaining, accountability is you got to surround yourself with that because this world ain't. It, it be lifing, okay? This mm -hmm. life be lifing. And, and you know, this world out here is a little ghetto. So you're going to have, <laughs> you're going to have a lot of temptation that's going to surround you. You're going to have a lot of people trying to make you compromise because they're like, oh, well, if this feels good, why would God abandon it? Why would God say this is wrong to do? No, mm -hmm. he's not saying that. And I feel like accountability is something that the world shies away from because it kind of, helps you to be able to kind of live how you want to and not have anything to, you know, anybody to really say anything to you or make you feel um, convicted enough mm -hmm. to want to change, um, you know, the things around you. And with abstaining, I'll say that that's, that's, that's been vital. That's been really vital yeah. because then I can call somebody if I'm on a date and be like, Hey, this is, you know, this is on my mind at the time. And they're they're like, okay, well, you know, like my friends are like, okay, go home. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, you right. Mm -hmm. I should go home because I'll call them and be like, hey, you think I need to go home? Because <laughs> this is how I'm feeling. <laughs> this is how I'm feeling. Yeah. And they'll be like, okay, go home. So I think it's, I think community and accountability and surrounding yourself with people who can kind of keep you on the right track, who you can have vulnerable conversations with kind of helps you make it a little bit better day to day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, I love it because I think that's something that we lack in a church, uh, let alone outside of the church, just having yeah. that accountability, somebody Absolutely. that can pray for you, somebody that's watching over you to have that kind of protection. Right. Mm -hmm. I remember at my old church and when I was living in Arizona, uh, you know, I had some people there that I would mentor or whatever. And one of my uh, women friends, she came up to me and said, Sean, she said, you know, I just kind of want to run him past you. You know, I, I want you to smell him, kind of see where he at. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you know, and, and he, she, he, you know, they would come to church and I would be checking on them and stuff like that. And, you know, and, and they got married and stuff like that. So it was to me, it was an honor that she trusted me to that degree to where she's like, I, I'm in it. So I can't see it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying I need somebody who's not connected to me in that way, or, you know, I'm, I'm in love. So I need somebody to see outside of that. Yeah. 
you know. help me get out of my own emotions so that I can make sure that I'm not allowing that to cloud my mind right now, cloud my vision. Mm -hmm. And I think that is really vital. And I'm happy I have that support system because I know some people don't. And that's the only reason why I really started doing this was because I needed to, you know, a lot of people come to me about not having that support system in the church, yeah. let alone outside of church. And it's hard to hear that. At, at some point I didn't. Um, yeah, yeah. It took me a while to be able, because I had a lot of friends that fell off. Mm -hmm. um, when I changed my life, I had a lot of people that fell off. So I didn't have all of that. But now that God has placed the right people in my life, I'm happy to have that community and support in order to be like, okay, hey, I don't think he's this yeah. because this is how I'm feeling in my spirit about him. So you need to go and let him go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's just, it's just really good to have that and kind of help you not make those rash decisions. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes, and here, here's the good part about it too, to have uh, a, a, a man as your covering, say if you don't have a father or your uncle or brothers and stuff like that, because mm -hmm. I, I still believe that women still should be covered uh, and not like old school, like, you know, like you can't wear a a, a, a skirt, you yeah. know, that kind of thing, <laughs> but just more yeah. of like protection, mm -hmm. you know, and you have because you have to be careful with that because you can't even you can't entrust everyone to cover you as a man. Absolutely. Because some people, you know, they they P R E Y on you instead of pray mm -hmm. for you, they pray on you. So to be able to yeah. find that mm -hmm. in a man, that's uh that's that's special. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. How do you if you're on a date, like and give this advice to someone as a woman, do when you're dating, do you bring up the the idea of marriage or is that something that you kind of see where he's at in that or do you approach it like well I want to get married like how does how does that play out well um I've been able to be honest I think um if you're wanting to ultimately create a relationship with someone you have to be honest you have to be, um, it's not that you're really being aggressive or you're trying to push someone into wanting that, that you, you know, what you want, but it's really just being able to be um, transparent with that person and saying, hey, you know, these are the things that I hope for. Mm -hmm. I'm not just dating in a forever dating pool. I don't want that. I ultimately want to have a spouse. I ultimately want to have kids. I ultimately want to be with someone more than just a partner or just a relationship. Mm -hmm. I want to be married. Mm -hmm. I want to be married. I want these things. And I think we kind of steer away from those deep conversations because we feel like it's going to scare off people. But boundaries only scare off the imposters. Mm -hmm. Boundaries don't scare off the people who are meant to be in your life. And if they're meant to be in your life, they're not going to get scared by you simply saying what you want. No, I'm not asking you for a ring. I'm not putting no gun to your head and saying, hey, up in six months, you got six months. I'm not doing that. And I don't recommend anybody to do that. Because then that kind of makes me feel like it's an idolizing of wanting to be married just to say I have a husband or just to say I have a wife. Mm -hmm. You have to get out of that. Yeah. What is you, you know, what are you ultimately wanting from dating? Are you dating with a purpose or are you just dating to casually see where things go, mm -hmm. casually get what you need and then leave? Mm -hmm. You have to be willing to have those serious conversations in order to weed out the imposters. You don't want to be sleeping with no counterfeit. I'm going to just put you don't want to. It may feel good at the time, but you tying your soul to possibly they demons and then they on demon time and then you're going to be on demon time because you tied yourself to they demons and now you're trying to give with somebody else but you don't know why you can't. You don't understand why it's a stronghold. It's so many consequences to us trying to take the shortcut, right? Mm -hmm. Trying to go right on. No, maybe God's trying to take you around because he took Moses and them around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They could have went straight through. You know, they could have. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, I got to take y'all through the Red Sea and everywhere else because 
<laughs> I have a better plan. I'm trying to get you to avoid the major things that I can get you to avoid. Mm -hmm. But because we're trying to rush things, because we feel like we have a biological clock that disqualifies us automatically, it does not. Yeah. Our age doesn't disqualify us. Our past doesn't disqualify us. God made us to be able to have that desire. So when people say God didn't give you that desire, yes, he does. He blesses marriage. Right. He blesses it. He Amen. blesses it. That is that is kingdom building right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when people think that, oh, well, no, I'm afraid to say what I need to say or ask what I need to ask, because then you're attaching yourself to the outcome. Trying to control the outcome in a way that won't hurt you, that won't cause rejection, that won't cause abandonment. Mm -hmm. And that's when you need to be going to therapy and some prayer. That That's when those two kind of need to be intertwining so you can kind of figure out why do you feel like you have to do certain things in order to get certain things or you feel like you have to um, hinder information mm -hmm. in order to kind of see if that person no go ahead and see yeah. okay because yeah. there are plenty of people plenty of men plenty of women in the world who are still single Mm -hmm. And your husband or wife is still, it still exists. If it didn't work out with one, that means he still exists. He just, you know, he or she just, the Lord just waiting the time to present them, but they still exist. Mm -hmm. So just detach yourself from the outcome. Yeah. That's what I feel like with that. Detach. Yeah. You have to. That's good. Yeah. Because like you say, trying to, uh, trying to uh, manipulate the situation, it, it, it won't fare. It won't work for you anyway. Because now right. you're doing it in your own strength. Mm -hmm. And that usually turns out it's like it's not God's will. You know, no. you try to manipulate the system and uh, let God be God. And there's nothing more beautiful than allowing someone just to be who they are. Mm -hmm. you know, if, if that's who you are, that's cool. And, and that might not work for you. And that's OK. Mm hmm. I think that's, that's a, a big issue, too. A lot of times we try to hold on to people who don't want to be held, you know. So and you just said something right there. You said something <laughs> real good. Real good. <laughs> real. You know, it's like yeah. it's okay. There's other people out here, you know, that 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 can love you, that can do way more for you. Um, Absolutely. but sometimes that soul tie gets you caught up and you should have been dropped them a long time ago. And you know, that yeah. person you could have been with. Now you got to go through this whole healing process because you're trying mm -hmm. to get over this dude or you're trying to get over this woman and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, a, it's a it's a vicious cycle. Uh, and then I also want to say, too, that when we talk about idolizing marriage and I remember a couple of weeks ago, I posted this online and I said that God, God didn't create marriage to be more fulfilling than him. So it's important to not idolize marriage mm -hmm. because sometimes you could get that person that you want and all of a sudden. God isn't on the throne anymore. That person is. Yeah. And, and you know what I'm saying? So God is not going to share his throne. You know, God is a jealous God. He ain't about to have that. Mm -hmm. And somebody got got to go and it ain't going to be God. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, that's it. Yeah. It's either him or him or not. <laughs> exactly. It's him or not. Yes, absolutely. Exactly. Oh, Drew, this has been really good. I, I want to kind of shift a little bit okay. okay so this is going to be drew uncut this is this is our bonus round so you you ready to do the bonus round let's go okay All right, let's go first question what's the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships um <sighs> trying to fix or build a man trying to fix or build a man, not understanding that that's not your job. You have to, you have to fall in love with the person that they are first. You can't fall in love with potential because then you're creating false narratives for yourself. And then when it doesn't happen the way that you thought it would go, then you start retracting. You start kind of like, oh, I can't, I don't think I could ever do this anymore. And I think we try to, um, 
like when I said my toxic trait about being, you know, psychoanalyzing and Mm -hmm. kind of being that, you know, advice giver for, you know, the person I'm talking to or whatever the case is, I think we fall um, short sometimes because we're always trying to, yeah, we're natural nurturers. We are as women, you know, we give birth, we give life. That's that that's true, but that is not your job to be trying to fix or build a grown man. Yeah. That is not your job. And I think that is like one of the biggest things that I see that I've done myself. (laughs) That I've done myself trying to do that. You you can't, mm -mm. God had to tell me and sit me down and say, hey, this that's my job. You're trying to do my job, trying to help and do all of that. But now you're doing it in a way that you're turning into his mama and not a person of interest or not, you know, his, his, his ultimate, you know, ultimately his spouse, you're not turning into that. You're literally kind of doing everything for him in a way that may take his leadership from him. That's kind of stripping him of the natural leadership that he already has, that God just awakens in you because I do believe in roles. Mm. I believe in roles. So I'm going to say that. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's ultimately like the biggest thing I see now. Yeah. In women. Yeah. That's good. That's good stuff. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Well, they were married for 10 years before they got divorced. Um I did see though that they um were very adamant in not arguing around us. Mm -hmm. not showing um, all of that because ultimately, you know, people think, well, you have, you get married and then you have kids. So you need to welcome, you know, them into every single conversation. No, ultimately that marriage is between you, them and God. Yeah, It's not between you, them and the kids and, and then God. Yeah. So you also have to understand that, you know, a marriage that's between y'all two, y'all need to fix that. Kids are not responsible for that. And I learned that because, and then he would always be a gentleman. Mm. I don't care if they was fighting for 500 days. (laughs) He would always um, be a gentleman. He would always show that chivalry around the house, um, be there for my mom, um, even though they had their problems. But ultimately he still showed, you know, he still was a gentleman. Mm. He still kept, um, he still tried to keep himself Um, as the leader, um, allowing my mom to be free in herself and be that nurturing person. But he also helped us understand um, the vital role of a woman and how we're the pillars of the home and we make a house a home and we um, are able to, you know, kind of handle the affairs we have. So we're kind of the liaison of the house. And so seeing them um, together, the good days, Mm -hmm. I was able to witness um, that and we, like I said, we didn't. I didn't experience fighting with them. They made sure to keep their marriage their business, and that is what they're supposed to do. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I agree. That's good. So, who makes a better spouse? Someone never married or someone divorced? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you want me to be real cut? Okay, I'm gonna be real uncut. All right. So, honestly. Oh, I think I would say that it is okay for a never married person to know a little bit more. Now, in society, we believe that because people have been married before and then divorced, they have a better experience. Mm -hmm. But you have to recognize that that could have been a bad marriage. That could have been a person that might have not been their spouse, but they made them their spouse, Mm -hmm. meaning that they created them into something that God said that they weren't. So you have to, I don't believe in the whole thing. If you're single, you don't know about marriage. Mm -hmm. If I learn from, if I, if, you know, reading my word and, you know, talking with God, having a relationship with him, Mm -hmm. he gives us the wisdom that we need Mm -hmm. in order to gain um, insight into what a marriage should look like, into what we should be as, you know, as women, as helpmates into what the man should be as the provider, the coverer, the the protector. Mm -hmm. He kind of gives us a blueprint 
you know, the word I always say is a blueprint for your life and how you can live it and how you can maintain. And somebody that's never married, yeah, they, they you know, just if they have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. yes, they can know about marriage. Mm -hmm. Um, I've dated divorced men before. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying all of them are like this, so I'm going to just put that disclaimer <laughs> out there. Yeah. <laughs> but the ones I've dated and even the ones I've had sessions with, Mm -hmm. um, to kind of help them um, mentally wise, they are damaged and broken. They had to grieve because you don't have to lose them physically um, in death in order to have grief. Mm -hmm. That's a grieving stage that they have to go through. Mm -hmm. um, I don't feel like, you know, I can't see how people can just, you know, hop, get out of one and just hop into another. Mm -hmm. Um because if you're truly with that person, if your heart was truly with that person, um, then they leave this kind of imprint, this kind of stamp that you have to kind of reprogram and rewire yeah. for a new person to be able to love you, to be able to have a capacity to love. Mm -hmm. um, and me dating divorced men, most of them um, didn't have, they they would have a, um, a lack of something, right? That they didn't receive in their marriage. And then ultimately because of their differences and because they just ultimately said no, then they, you know, ended their marriage and then they get to me. Okay. I've never been married before. Mm -hmm. And so they, the love bombing can happen mm -hmm. because it's like, Oh, I need to, because, you know, it's, it's just this breath, breath of fresh air mm -hmm. um, that can happen. And I, I feel like divorced people are very, um, they're broken. Yeah. This, you know, it's been, I don't care how long it was. Mm -hmm. year two years you will still have a little bit to take with you so you have to handle that properly and very carefully to make sure that you are ready to mm -hmm. some because sometimes you can um not recognize the love that can be given to you through that refreshing person yep. that you newly started dating because of the scars that were put on you from your previous marriage so honestly I'm not going to say both one of them makes either or mm -hmm. I think it's all about um, having a relationship with God, gaining that wisdom from him so that he can kind of guide you into what that should be, because I don't have to be married in order to know how to be married. Mm -hmm. Those are those are not the they, they don't go in, in. They don't really just intertwine with each other mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. because if I know um, how if I have a good heart posture. If I know how to love, if I know how to be gentle, if I know how to care, if I know how to um, sustain, if I know how to protect, if I know how to be a pillar, if I know all of these things, mm -hmm. you can be with someone else. If I know mm -hmm. how to share with others, because it's very hard when you're getting married to somebody else, you're literally kind of splitting your life into two and le letting that other person's life intertwine with yours. Y'all are becoming one. Oh, yeah. So it's not that you have to be married in order to know how to be because you can have a bad marriage and a good marriage. Mm -hmm. If you have a bad marriage, sweetheart, you maybe you weren't learning nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't learn, or you need to take time to learn what you're learning or, or learn your wants and desires healed, your healed wants and desires. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you take the time to heal, then you can know, but being never married, never been in, you know, e even in that type of entanglement, even trying to do all of that, I'm going to say that I wasn't, mm -hmm. I still can know that I'm a wife. Mm -hmm. I still can know that I am going, I'm not a girlfriend. Yeah. It, it don't run for me. I I I I don't know how to do that. It's <laughs> it's because I'm automatically wanting to be um, giving and loving and nurturing and and being that safe space and wanting you to be vulnerable. So I'm doing everything I can to 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 love you in the capacity that you need to be loved. So I don't feel like because I'm never married, I don't know about it. Because marriage is give and take. Marriage is compromise. Mm -hmm. If you learn those principles, if you learn how to communicate. Because you can still be married and not know how to communicate. That's right. Then you are able to have at least the foundation mm -hmm. in order to be able to walk into that. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, I don't I don't feel like it's a di I feel like it's a difference, but yeah. I don't feel like one is more than the other because it literally depends mm -hmm. on where their foundation is, where their walk is, where their mind is, mm -hmm. where their heart is. It's mm -hmm. so many things that come into play with marriage and knowing truly what that means. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For mm -hmm. sure. Next question. What's harder for you to say? Is it A, I apologize, B, I need help, C, I love you, or D, I was wrong? Ooh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I need help. You want to talk um, about that a little bit? Why? Why? why a little why? bit. A little bit. So I've always been deemed as like the strong one. Okay. And that's the one that everybody looks to, everybody comes to. Mm -hmm. People think that they're bulletproof. People think mm -hmm. that they don't go through nothing. People... Mm -hmm don't really know how to see them weak mm -hmm. so they kind of put them on a pedestal of being strong mm -hmm. because that's all they know them to be that's all you would i would know how to be because i've had to be yeah um and with that you don't know how to ask for help mm -hmm. because it's like if i tell them you know hey this is what's going on with me because i deal with um i used to deal with chronic pain yeah. and that was something that um caused me to be weak yeah that was something that affected me in the way that kind of, you know, um, crippled me a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to ask because nobody has ever seen me um, weak. Nobody ever seen me in a way um, that I was helpless. Mm -hmm. So they didn't know what to do. And things that are left unsaid, you cannot put ex expectations on things that are left unsaid. Mm -hmm. um, so I would always have an issue with asking for help. Um, and I did learn that that was a little prideful. The Lord showed me, hey, mm -hmm. you're being a little prideful. <laughs> I get what people have put you on. But, you know, like uh, my mama say, closed mouths don't get fed. And <laughs> you yeah. have to be willing to kind of you have to be willing to be transparent, even if that means exposing yourself, because vulnerability is exposing yourself. Right. And that's scary to expose, to show your true self. Um, I remember I was scared to tell people about my journey with dealing with pain because I had an accident and then I started dealing with a lot. Um, that was scary because I was young when I when it started. So it was very hard to kind of um navigate that. But now, oh no, mm -hmm. I will say what I need to say. Um, because the other ones are not hard for me. Yeah. Because I never want to put myself in a position to where I'm hurting somebody intentionally or even unintentionally yeah. i will try to self-reflect and know what i need to do um and not be prideful because pride comes before the fall that's, that's right. what it says in proverbs so i have to be mindful mm -hmm. <laughs> but i need me needing help that was very that was very hard because when you're looked at as, as this person everybody looks up to you it's very hard to fall under the cracks and be under pressure it's very it's very hard yeah i get it Last question. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Ooh, you asking some questions. Okay. <laughs> Is it easier to love yourself? Love someone else. Okay, let's talk about um, it. It's very, it's very hard. It's very hard to love yourself. I can easily tell somebody, you know, even the things I say on my social media. Yeah. I'm hell. I'm so happy that it helps people, but it's very hard to say that to yourself. Yes, it's very hard to go um, behind the closed doors, behind all the noise, and you know, kind of look at yourself and 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 give yourself the love that you're you're seeking or that you keep giving somebody else, mm -hmm. because ultimately the right person is going to recognize how you love yourself if you love yourself. Yep. They're going to see that. They're going to notice that, yep. and. You have to make sure that the things that you're giving someone else, you deserve those things. Mm -hmm. You deserve to be loved. You deserve to feel loved. You deserve to be able to have a safe space. You deserve to be able to have that um, covering that you keep trying to give everybody else. Mm -hmm. And I would say, because I, I deal with this too, stop trying to be in the people pleasing business or going into the facade of helping others because you're trying to cover up what you're going through because you don't want to cope. Mm -hmm. You're avo you're avoiding coping with the things that you need to cope with. And ultimately that will heal you. Mm -hmm. But
But because you're trying to kind of blind yourself by loving and helping others, you are neglecting yourself. Yeah. And you ultimately don't need to do that because, like I said, people are going, you don't think people will see. You don't think you're good at covering it up. You're good at not showing people um, how. But people, what I've learned in life is that people really pay attention to you. They pay attention to the things that are unseen. They pay attention to the light that they may see. They pay attention to the um, abuse that you may be giving yourself. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. People pay attention to those things. And God is wonderful because he also kind of sends those right things to you, that those nudges, mm -hmm. um, you know, from those people to tell you, hey, this is what, you know, I, I, I've seen this. I've seen you kind of, you know, downing yourself out or, you know, beating yourself up. And these are the things that you can't do, but you, you're doing all these things to other people. But you have to first love God and then learn, learn to love yourself before you can love anybody else. Amen to that. You're right. Love it. Well, Drew, this has been a phenomenal episode. Thank you so much for stopping by and dropping your wisdom and helping some of the listeners and the viewers out. Definitely appreciate you. Uh, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. Well, you can get in touch with me on all my social medias. So I have Facebook, Instagram, and I also have Threads, which is starting to pick up. And it's Southern and Saved, okay, because I'm from Texas. So that's where the Southern comes from. Um, Southern and Saved. And I also uh, have my website um, called DiligentlySeekingGod.org. And that is where I am trying to welcome faith into the culture, applying faith to the culture. And yeah, just contact me. You can, you can DM me, okay? I'm not those type of people that don't read my messages. Um, but anyway, in that form, yeah, you can reach me that way. Awesome, awesome. Well, Bravehearts community, you heard it here. Go and connect with Drew. I'm going to have everything connected in the description below so that way you can get in touch with her. With her. Uh, as you could tell, she brought so much wisdom, so much perspective. So if you are struggling in that dating area, this episode is for you. This is Sean Heineman with special guest Drew Davis, and we are out.